Viewer discretion is advised. Have you ever had a case of amnesia? You bump your head or something makes your brain all discombobulated and poof, no memory about your identity or a good portion of your past. Oftentimes, people recover from amnesia in a matter of minutes, hours, or even months for a few unlucky folks. I can't remember anything before my 18th birthday. I vaguely recall walking through some random toy store, messing around with some toys and passing out. The next thing I knew, I woke up outside in some alleyway with half my life just wiped from my mind. I went to my doctor and they initially thought I was joking, as I hadn't suffered any injuries physically or mentally. It wasn't until they called my parents and began asking me questions about my childhood. They started asking me about the incident I went through in high school. Confused, I asked them what exactly they were referring to, and they looked at me concerned and a little bit happy. Perhaps it's better if she forgets? My dad whispered to my mom. She shook her head and turned to me with a very serious look in her eye. Mom then pulled me aside and explained. When you were 15, you snuck out with your friends to watch The Exorcist, even though you were underage and would undoubtedly be freaked out. Dear, you had nightmares for years after that and refused to sleep without some light on. In high school, there was a power outage at your school and you were in a room without any windows. You were found in the bathroom frantically screaming and mumbling about demons, unable to see reality for what it truly was. We had to put you in a special medical facility after that. None of your friends came to visit you or talk to you when you got out. Oh, poor girl. I didn't go to some medical facility, right? Uncle Charlie took care of me, didn't he? My parents looked at each other before turning to the doctor. You don't have an Uncle Charlie. Okay, perhaps more testing is needed after all. My doctor said as he ushered me to another examination room without letting me get another word in. And now, I started to see some strange things here and there that stirred up faint memories. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you SCP Foundation Heater Class Object SCP-5119. SCP-5119, also known as Uncle Charlie's Toys and Games, is an extra-dimensional space that resembles a rundown toy store. And due to its extra-dimensional nature, it is unable to be contained. This space can only be accessed by individuals who meet the following specific requirements. Above 25 years of age, had an overall highly negative childhood, experienced emotional or domestic abuse, had to become more mature despite their status as an adolescent, few or no childhood friendships outside of family, raised by individuals not blood related to them, witnessed the death of a family member, poor memory recollection of childhood. 5119 targets these individuals by using print and digital media. Ads for Uncle Charlie's toys and games can be found in commercials, print ads, billboards, and even in the dreams of the targeted individuals. These ads, when seen by anyone else, will be nothing more than regular ads for non-anomalous items or services. The ad itself features a cartoonish, demonic, red-skinned creature with horns, a black top hat, and a black and white striped shirt. This creature, designated as SCP-5119-A, is seen as kind of fun by the viewer. These ads will continue to plague the individual until they accept the invitation to go to 5119 and follow the instructions to do so. The instructions themselves often make no sense, but if followed exactly, it will cause 5119 to manifest. Note, 5119 will not manifest if others are nearby the chosen individual. The interior of the building is extremely run down, dilapidated and burned down in some spots. Lining the aisles are numerous types of toys and games that are foreign to our dimension. However, these toys are non-anomalous in nature and are not threatening. Those inside the store will soon find themselves reverting to a more childlike state mentally. They will happily play with the damaged toys, eat rotten candy, and sing and dance as though they were children. After leaving 5119, the individual will lose all their memories prior to their 18th birthday. Prior to leaving 5119, those inside will see a small wooden door before blacking out and waking up in a random nearby location. A woman by the name of Lee Boletto had reported to her local law enforcement about being inundated with ads for 5119. Foundation agents embedded within the police force contacted the foundation about this, and Miss Boletto was quickly taken into custody. She was summarily given the status of a D-Class personnel, but with a bit more privileges due to her non-criminal history. 
henceforth called D680. She was outfitted with microphones and cameras before being told to follow the instructions to enter 5119. D680 agreed, and the Foundation was then able to see what exactly happens inside of it. After following the instructions to enter 5119, audio and visual recording started. Test, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Please enter the store, D680. Sure, sure. The D-Class walked inside and noticed the burned down interior. Black stains on the walls and everything was a mess. Jeez, what the hell happened in here? A fire or something? It would appear that way. Please continue. She walked around and picked up a number of games and toys. These are all like knockoffs of existing brands. I swear to God that this private USA figure here is supposed to be Captain America. We are unaware of their origins. Please continue. And it's available on Animation Network too? I'll let you figure out what it's trying to rip off. She walked around the store aimlessly, slowly examining whatever she came across with a bit of disinterest. She stopped in front of a counter where a broken cash register sat atop of it. Do you feel any different? How would you say your mental state is? Just dandy. I'm a little bored if that's what you mean. I do feel nostalgic though, like strolling through someone's childhood. One I never had. Dr. Rachel listened and made a note on her clipboard. Continue. Nearly 10 minutes went by before she started laughing. When Dr. Rachel asked her what's going on, she didn't respond until another 10 minutes later. I'm fine, sorry. This place just grows on you after a while is all. Oh my gosh, a giant giraffe. D680 hopped onto a huge stuffed giraffe and pretended to ride it. Dr. Rachel ordered her to get off of it and resume the mission. When D680 suddenly coughed, and came to her senses, but it didn't last long. Why was I? Oh, candy! D680 ran over to a rotating structure covered in rotten candy and asked if she could eat any of it. Do not eat any of it. That is an order. Aw, oh, come on, just one! If you do, you'll be terminated. Fine. D680 then began singing a song that appeared to reference SCP-5119-A. Hold on. Can you repeat the words to the song you were singing? I wasn't singing anything, right? D680 suddenly coughed violently, spitting up a mass of black sludge. A small wooden door then materialized next to D680 who began crawling towards it. Stop! If you enter that door, you will be terminated. Is that understood? But I, I want to go in, can I? Dr. Rachel once again threatened termination but the D-Class simply ignored her order and continued singing as she crawled through the doorway. D-680 crawled through a dark tunnel. A large empty room was illuminated by an orange glow ahead. As she entered the room, she saw 5119-A in the center of it. A massive, obese, and unclothed, its fingers were extremely long and distended. The sight of it caused D-680 to come to her senses. Oh God, get me out, Dr. Rachel. Get me out of here now. Communication failed then, but Dr. Rachel could still see what is happening through the D-Class body cam. Shh, do not worry. I'm not going to hurt you. Rachel, anyone, help. They don't matter right now, Lee. Why do you know my name? What are you? It's me, Uncle Charlie. I built this place just for you. I'm your friend, something you didn't have, right, Lee? You have no idea what you're talking about. It's okay. You had to be responsible. I get it. Totally. You had to take care of your brother, especially with your parents gone. Shut up. You have no idea what it's like. She began tearing up. 5119-A extended its hand and picked her up using its lengthy finger. What do you want from me? Please, just let me go. Hmm, perfect. Sorry for the rough treatment. I just like to see what I'm about to get. Yes, plenty of trauma. Let's just get it out. 5119-A then shoved a finger deep down her throat and scooped out the same black sludge from before. She shouted before vomiting more of it as the entity laughed. There you go, sweetie. Let out all of that pain. 5119-A used its fingers to scoop up and eat the black substance. What is this? Why was this inside of me? because cruelty rules this world, Lee. Suddenly, a loud banging sound was heard from behind a nearby trapdoor. It was getting louder and more intense. What's down there? Nothing that concerns you. 
Oh dear, it's getting cranky. You'll have to leave now. With a single tap from the entity on D680's head, she lost consciousness and her body went limp instantly. After recovering D680 from a nearby forest, she was interviewed after being given a day of rest about her experience. D680 agreed to the interview, and Dr. Rachel's assistant, Dr. Lars, asked her a few select questions. When asked how she was feeling, D680 responded that she was fine. And after being asked if she could remember the toy store, she said she had, but had no recollection of entering any wooden door at all. Dr. Lars then asked her if she could remember anything from her childhood. When she said she couldn't remember anything, she mentioned that it didn't really bother her. She then interrupted the interview by saying that she wanted to go back to the toy store while letting out a chuckle. Dr. Lars told her that would not be happening and asked if she remembered her brother, Jason. She hesitated for a moment, as though forcefully trying to get hold of a fleeting memory, but said she never had a brother. D680 did state she remembered her uncle Charlie, that he was always there for her, took care of her, and made sure that she had plenty of happy memories. Dr. Lars asked D680 to tell him about some of those so-called happy memories. D680's smile suddenly began to fade and became greatly agitated, with tears welling up in her eyes. She muttered over and over that she can't remember and slammed her head into the table. Dr. Lars looked sadly into the recording device before motioning for the interview to be over.